A second day of red across the markets today. What should you do? Well, I'm not going to tell you what you should do with your money, but I will show you what I'm doing with mine. G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel where today I respond to you, the viewers who have asked for another practical guide to buying the dip. The day has come and I'm going to walk through the process of what I'm doing in buying this dip a little bit different to my previous buying the dip videos. Before we get into it, if you are getting any value out of these videos, please do hit that like, share and subscribe button. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. Also consider sharing with your friends if you think they could get any value out of this also. Okay, story time with Uncle Adam. So as you know, I'm a big believer in dollar cost averaging. And two days ago, I was about to go on my dollar cost averaging purchasing spree offline, just doing it myself, I'm not in front of the camera. And I just thought, no, it just doesn't feel right. Something deep within was saying, don't buy now, the market's going to pull back. And within about three to four hours after I said, no, I'll just wait a bit, the market dumped. Now, I'm not suggesting by any chance that I have some type of magical power where I can see the markets going in a certain direction. However, what was quite a good feeling was that the gut came into play. So many people say, go with your gut, go with your gut. And on this one, I could just feel that the market was just about to turn, and it did. Now, again, I don't always get this right, but I've noticed that after watching charts every single day for years upon years, sure, you see patterns through technical analysis. Other times, it's just your gut. And if you haven't read my book yet, 28 Pro Trader Tips The Art of Trading, I suggest you read that book because instead of focusing on the technicals of trading, it focuses on the art of trading. I've seen the market saturated with technically focused books on trading, which is fine, and you should read those to get a foundation to trading. But what I'm trying to bring you as either an investor or a trader is the art of what we're doing. And in this instance, we're actually going to bring these two worlds together where we apply the science and mathematics of trading to the art of trading and even investing. Noting that a trader is coming in and out of the markets all the time, buying those peaks and troughs, whether they're longing or shorting the position, whereas an investor is in simple terms buying to hold. I live in both of these worlds. And today I'm going to show you how I'm approaching the markets, noting we have a very peculiar dip. Okay, let's get into it. So here we have our handy dandy crypto allocation calculator. You may have seen me use this in previous videos. If you would like a copy of this spreadsheet that has the calculations put in for you, you're welcome to get a copy at adam at the crypto dot land. That's adam at the crypto dot land. Write to me, mention this video and I'll send you a copy. No cost, of course. In the past, we've spoken about a one-off budget calculator. Then I've done a dollar cost average calculator. We then did market orders below listed price. But today we're going to do something a little bit different where this is the crypto hedging one-off budget calculator. And what a fun title for a calculator as well. So what do I mean by hedging? Okay, so I want to buy the dip. I want to buy the dip because the market's in red and I see some good buys out there. But going off, dare I say, the art of trading, I just don't feel the market going in a given direction. So I'm gonna hedge my bet. That is, I'm gonna buy the dip right now, and instead of putting all my money in what the price is now, I'm gonna put it in half of what the price is now, and then half below what the price is at the moment. So looking at my allocator here, I am going to set a budget of $3,940 today. So that will pre-fill all these numbers down here, noting I've already chosen what coins that I want to buy today. I've chosen what percentage I want to allocate to the coins that I'm going to purchase today. And I've put in the budget over here of how much I've got to spend. Now, because I'm going to put half in at what the price is right now, and the other half in at below what the price is now, I have to set a percentage of how much further below the price I want to go. So I initially started this video putting it 10% below, and I thought, geez, it's, it's already dropped 10%. For Bitcoin to go down another 10%, and the, and the rest of the market to go down another 10%, it's kind of a long stretch. Possible? Yes. Do I think it's going to happen? No. Why? because I've been doing this every day for decades and you just start to feel what the market is doing. Again, there is not an exact science to trading, nor is there an exact art. You wanna try and merge these worlds together. So that rant aside, I'm actually gonna allocate half of my budget to purchasing crypto 6% below what the market price is. Now, just roll with me here as I go through this. We'll be working on CoinSpot, of course. And if you don't have a CoinSpot account, I ask that you consider using my affiliate link. It comes at no cost to you, but ensures you're going to a secure site whilst helping me help you. I'll leave a link in the description below or on the top right corner. 
Okay, let's go shopping. Step one, you take a look at the heat map. And ironically, my gut keeps coming to fruition. You can see the market is now pulling back again. So the Bitcoin price was down 11% yesterday. Now it's sort of crept up to the 6% down and then it dropped to 7% down. I just feel in my crypto waters that it could pull back another 6% in the next 24 hours. If it doesn't, I've bought the dip right now. If it does, I get half at what the price is now and half at 6% below. It's hedging your bets. This is not the only approach to buying crypto, but it is the way I'm doing it right now. So I always like to go to the heat map. It gives you an overall command picture of the battle space per se. You can see what's happening, what your ticks are doing, that is your troops in contact. Yes, I'm using many military analogies here, but I like to use these analogies when going out into the crypto battlefronts because in many ways, trading or investing is a type of war of attrition. You need to be prepared to lose some troops, that being some coin along the way, taking some risks and moving forward to claim victory. Okay, military chat aside, I've seen the heat map, I'm looking at the crypto battle space, I've been watching this closely for hours today, but weeks, months, even years in the big picture. I've got a feel for what's going on, I've done my research in the background, and I've identified what coins I would like to buy today. If you're only interested in what I'm buying today, I'll just give it to you right now, but if you want to learn how I'm doing this, I suggest that you stick around and watch what I'm doing. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Hex, yes you Hexicans, that is on the list, Solana, Terra, Avalanche, Algorand, VeChain, Elrond Gold, Zilliqa, Sushi, Litecoin, Polygon, Pancake, and Cardano. There are many reasons why I'm buying these coins. I won't go into the reason for each of these coins now, otherwise I'll be talking for hours, noticing I'm purchasing 15. The main thing I want you to consider is that the majority of my allocation is going to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the Mac Daddy. It's the blue chip share. It's the safe one, in my opinion, and it's the one you can never have enough of. I'm also buying a large portion of Ethereum because half of that allocation is going to go straight into my MetaMask wallet so I can go and buy some HEX and stake that HEX. The rest is 5% allocations in medium to higher risk coins with the exception of Litecoin and Cardano. All of those coins have only a 5% allocation out of my budget of $3,940. Right, over to the crypto.land where I can do everything crypto on one safe and secure site. This is the portal I use to get into all of these sites to ensure I'm not going to a shadow site to my Australian crypto brothers and sisters you might like to come here to join Coinspot to my international crypto brothers and sisters you might like to come here to join Binance of course Aussies can join Binance as well but these are the two main trading platforms that I'm comfortable using most certainly Coinspot for the majority of my trades Binance primarily for my staking okay let's get into it here we are on my Coinspot dashboard where I've got just over a third of a million in my portfolio and just under four grand in my available funds to spend today. Remember, never keep more than 20% in any one place. Don't keep your money on an exchange unless you are a trader. That's the only reason why I have so much on this exchange. A, because I trust it, but B, I need those huge amounts of money to be able to push around in and out and through the markets. Equally, there are other exchanges and platforms where you'd put your money in there to either stake, yield farm, add to liquidity pools, earn interest, and so forth. But right now, we are going shopping, and the first thing we need to consider is what is at the top of the list. I implore that if you are going to do this, noting that nothing I'm saying here is financial advice, just what I'm doing. Before you go shopping, make the list. Don't just look at what's happening on the charts and throw darts blindly at it. You want to first go to the heat map, understand what's happening in the crypto battlefield at the moment. You rely on your intel from all the research that you've been doing every day, every week, every month since you've entered the crypto space, and now is the time that you make your move. So noting the first thing that we're going to buy today is Bitcoin at 20%. I've put in a budget of $3,940, 6% below price, meaning half of my Bitcoin allocation is going to buy now and half is going to buy 6% below the current price. If the market does drop a little bit lower, I'll get some cheaper Bitcoin and other coins on the list. If it doesn't drop another 6%, then I've hedged my bets and I've got some at a lower price right now. Okay, because Bitcoin is available on the markets tab here at CoinSpot, I'm going to first buy some Bitcoin through the markets because if you buy here, it's a 0.1% fee. That is the lowest fee in Australia on any site anywhere at the moment. And that's part of the reason why I use CoinSpot, not just because of the low fees in the markets in particular, but because of the security. If you're only focusing on low fees, which are tax deductible anyway, you're really exposing yourself to unnecessary risk. By going with some dodgy platform that is not open and audited and been around for a long time, you may save a few bucks today only to learn that you've lost everything tomorrow. 
If you've been in this space long enough, you know that platforms regularly go down, which is why when you choose one to shop with, you want to make sure you're going with one that is very secure. Okay, that rant aside, let's get into placing our first order. I'm going to the BTC AUD markets. I know my allocation is $394, therefore I go down here. And if you've been using this site for a while, you'll notice that they've actually updated this. It's much smoother and cleaner. We're going in the buy side today. I change that to AUD because I know that I'm allocating $394 simply put in $394. I'm buying it at the market rate right now. Buy that BTC, put the order in, confirm the buy with the 39 cent fee on that and that order is in and I should see a little green box come up here very soon confirming that that order has gone through successfully. Okay, so now I've bought at market. I want to buy 6% below market. There you go. There's that little green box saying that my order has been successfully completed. Okay, so back down to the markets. This time we want to go 6% below and to do that, I simply take this amount here, which is what the current rate is on the markets. I go to my little handy dandy crypto hedging one-off budget allocator calculator, which is so much fun to say. I paste the current price in here, and now we can see this amount is 6% less of that. So I'm gonna take this number here, I'm gonna paste it in here. So now that's 6% below. And again, because I'm allocating $394, I put 394, buy BTC, confirm the buy, and now that order is in the markets, 6% below what the current price is. Before I move into doing all the other orders quite quickly, I've essentially determined my macro budget of everything I'm spending today. I've chosen the list of coins that I'd like to buy. I've allocated a percentage of my budget to those coins, and I've hedged this budget by saying, half right now, half 6% below. Time to get into the rest of the purchases. Strap on in my crypto brothers and sisters. We are going for a crypto shopping spree. Next coin being Ethereum, go to markets, select the Ethereum markets, scroll down, noting that I'm allocating $394 to this, change that to AUD, type in 394 by ETH, and that's gone through to my international viewers. These are Australian dollar amounts, so don't freak out when you see a higher price than what you're used to in US dollars. It's funny, a couple of times I've got a huge amount of abuse in the comments saying, how dare you promote these sites? These prices are way high. And many people have come in and said, you know, this is Australian dollars. And thank you to those who did stick up for me when those abusive comments come through. It's always fun watching some of the battles take place in the comment section. Sometimes all fun and games, sometimes a bit emotional. But today we're focused on buying crypto rather than the emotion of the markets. Okay, so that order just went through. I'm now going to take that amount there, control C, go back to my little calculator, paste it into the current price. Now for the order 6% below, I take that amount there, go over to my calculator, paste it into this cell here. We can see that's the amount that I'm willing to bid. Sorry if you can hear that banging in the background. All fun and games on the estate today. Take this amount here, control C, paste it in here, control V, allocate an amount of $394 to this purchase, buy ETH and the order is in, that's it. Now the next one is Hex. Hex is not available on CoinSpot. In fact, Hex isn't really available on any mainstream exchange. Therefore, I'm not actually gonna buy it right now. I'm going to use the Ethereum that I have purchased to transfer to my MetaMask wallet to then swap for Hex and then stake it on the Hex platform. To my Hexagon brothers and sisters, don't stress, I'm not leaving Hex out of the list. On to Solana though, that's my next allocation, 5% of $3,940, that's $98.50 now and $98.50 on Solana, 6% below the current price. The difference with purchasing something like Solana though is that you can see it's not available on the markets. So to buy Solana, I go up to buy sell, scroll down to sole, select buy, and noting that I'm going to put $98.50 at the current rate, I just simply write 98.50 in AUD, double check, take your time here, that'll give me half a sole, press buy, confirm buy, and that is mine. Okay, but how do I now buy the other half of Solana 6% below? Well, I'm glad you asked. All you need to do is go to buy sole, press order soul up here. But before we do, I wanna take that price of 191.22. That's the current price of Solana. I copy that, put it into my little calculator, do a special paste. Otherwise, if I do just control V, it'll go weird like that. So I'm going to do a special paste of doing that little tab there. And now I know that the buy limit I'm going to put in is 179.75, which is 6% below the current market rate. 
And just on Solana, if you watched my recent videos, two of which I've spoke about Solana, I mentioned it probably wasn't the right time to buy back then. That proved to be completely true. That price has dropped down considerably since we saw that massive pump in Solana, a big pullback, irrespective of what the rest of the markets have done. We can now see we can get some very cheap Solana at 191 Australian dollars. Okay, so I go over to the order tab. I wanna click on buy limit, and I'm gonna say if the price of Solana drops to 179.75, which is 6% below the current price. Paste that in there. I would like to buy, as we can see in my calculator, $98.50 worth, which would give me a bit over half a sol. I set that buy limit. I confirm that buy limit. And now that has gone into the open orders. And if Solana drops by 6%, it's mine. Okay. On to our next coin, which is Terra Luna, $98.50, which will be the allocation for all of the coins that we're putting in here beyond this point. Go to buy and sell, put in Terra there, press buy Luna, and initially I'm going to buy $98.50 straight up, which gives me two and a half Luna, press buy, confirm buy, that's mine. Now I want to do the same thing with Luna, where I'm going to buy it as an order with a buy limit at 6% below this much. Take that amount there, go to my spreadsheet, special paste the price into the current price. Now we can see that the buy limit is 35.75. Copy that amount there, paste that here. You could write it in manually. If you prefer, I'm just lazy and just go control C, control V. And of course, the amount that we're allocating to this as per all coins from here on is 98.50. Set the buy limit, confirm that buy limit. If that price drops, the order will go through. I've hedged my bets. On to the next one. That being Avalanche. Go to buy and sell. Type in AVAX, I think is the code. Yep, buy AVAX. 98.50 right now at current price, which would give me 1.2. Confirm buy, that's mine. Back to the AVAX wallet. Buy more, order AVAX, do a buy limit. The current amount is 79.16, so I take that amount here, paste it into here, the special paste, which means what I will be bidding at 6% below is 74.41. Now again, I've just chosen 6%. You might want to choose 12%. Could the market drop 12%? Absolutely. Will it? No idea. Do I think it will? I don't think so, noting it's already dropped about 10%. Another 6% is being quite wishful in the sense that a 16% drop, noting how strong the markets are otherwise looking, is a little optimistic or pessimistic, depending which way you're looking at the markets. But I'm rambling here. I control, copy that amount there. I paste it into here. I say how much I'd like to buy. You can probably hear my rooster in the background. He seems happy. Set that buy limit, confirm buy, and that's done. I had three baby chickens the day before yesterday. They're little champions, I just love them. If you've ever had the chance to raise chickens, you can probably relate to what I'm saying. Okay, <laughs> chickens aside, we're supposed to be shopping for crypto here. Back to buy and sell. Next on the list, we are getting some Algorand. This has done very good for me. I type in Algo, and that brings that up. Buy Algorand. Immediately, I'm gonna buy 98.50 worth. That'll give me 42 Algos. Confirm buy. This is 10% below what it was yesterday. That looks good. Now I need to buy some more Algorand, 6% below the market rate I go to buy order algo buy limit I'm going to take that amount there control C back to my little calculator put it in under special paste I can see that the bid amount will now be $2.21 which is 6% below the current price put that in there $98.50 is the amount I'd like to order set the buy limit confirm buy and that is that done on to the next one on the list we can see V chain again you can see why it's so important to make these lists so you don't get distracted like that time Homer Simpson was at school and ended up chasing a squirrel around a tree <laughs> You need to remain focused when you're putting this money in the markets, says the guy who was just talking about baby chickens. Okay, here we are on VeChain Thor. Buy VeChain Thor. We're doing 98.50 at the current price, which will give me 749 vets. Buy that, confirm buy. Back to the vet wallet, buy. Order vet, buy limit. I want to take this price here, troll C over to my little calculator, chuck it into the current price. Now I'm going to put a bid in for 12 cents here, paste 12 cents there. $98.50, that'll give me $820 if it goes through. Set the buy limit, confirm buy limit, and that order is in. You'll notice that when I put these buy limit orders in, it's not actually coming out of my account funds yet because those orders haven't gone through because the market hasn't yet dropped 6%. If it drops 6%, I get some cheap crypto. If it doesn't, I can cancel those orders later or just leave them in there as long as I want until they tick through. Sometimes this will happen. You put in an order, you kind of forget you put in the order, and then you'll get an email or a little confirmation saying, congratulations, your order was successful. And you'll be like, 
oh, that's right, I put in that order ages ago and then it ticks through. So that's kind of a good feeling when the market drops because you think, oh, the market's dropping, but suddenly you get these little order confirmations coming in saying, congratulations, your order was successful, you now own that crypto. And that's an important mindset to take when you're playing the long game in crypto, whether you're a trader or an investor. Over to Litecoin. Litecoin is a powerhouse. Now, Litecoin is in the markets. How do I know that? Just because I've been doing this for years. I go to markets. I go down to Litecoin, view LTC AUD markets. Why am I doing this one in the markets? Because it's a cheaper fee in doing so. Scroll down. I want to buy $98.50 worth at the current rate. Buy LTC. Confirm that buy. That is into the markets. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but 6% below. The current rate of LTC is $218.50 four cents Australian. I use Litecoin a lot. A lot of the people I work with internationally, they actually want to be paid in Litecoin. And as a miner, I love mining Litecoin as well. That order has just gone through for LTC. I'm now going to paste that amount in here. We can see that the new price is now $204.96. That's 6% below the current market. I copy, paste that in there, 204. How much would I like to buy? $98.50 worth, $98.50 buy LTC and that order is in. Will it go through? Who knows, but I just picked up a bit of Litecoin there and I'm mining this stuff in the background. I love Litecoin. Low supply, easy coin to use, one of the OGs and just a really reliable coin. On to our next purchase, which is Polygon. Geez, the Poly Network does some amazing things. If you're into minting NFTs and you're using OpenSea, if you mint the NFT using the Ethereum network, massive gas fees. If you mint it on the Polygon network, no gas fees. And that is just mind-boggling as people are willing to pay huge amounts of money to mint their NFTs by dropping down on OpenSea. I'll make a video on this later. You can simply select the Polygon network and mint an NFT for free. It does come with some disadvantages, but that's something to discuss for another day. Okay, Polygon 98.50. It's not on the market, so I go to buy and sell. Type in Poly. I could scroll down, but I just go straight to it here. Select Matic, which is the code for Polygon. Immediately, I'm going to buy 98.50 worth. That'll give me 61 Matic. Press buy, confirm buy, that's done. Now I'm gonna do $98.50 below market. Over to the automatic buy limit. I take that amount there, control C, paste it into my little calculator here. I can now see that the buy limit order will be $1.51, which is 6% below. Copy that amount there, paste it here, $98.50. If the Polygon price falls to $1.51, I'd like to buy $98.50 worth, which will give me 65. Set that buy limit, confirm the buy limit. That one's in there. The next one is Pancake. Why am I buying Pancake? A few reasons, I like the coin, but also I really like the staking rewards on this thing. I'll probably take this cake over to Binance later and then just stake it there. The last price was, I think, about 40%. Be careful with shopping for coins simply for the staking rewards. It's a way of, I don't want to say scamming, but luring purchases into buying a coin simply so they can stake it. But noting the staking rewards are paid out in what you're staking. If that coin goes down in value, it doesn't matter what the staking reward is worth. If those staking rewards are worth almost nothing as the coin collapses. I'm not suggesting that will happen with Pancake, but it's just something to consider that when you're buying a coin simply because the staking rewards are looking good, you have to be cautious and think in the third dimension of the crypto space of what could actually be happening in the background. Okay, so what have we just done? We've basically hedged our bets. We allocated half of our budget to what the price is right now, and we allocated half of that budget to what the price could be if it drops another 6%. I really want you to focus on the mind game here. That is, many people get so caught up in, oh, could have, should have, would have. You have to put that emotion aside. And if you don't understand how to deal with it, again, read my book, 28 Pro Trader Tips, The Art of Trading, available on Amazon, link below. Cheap to purchase, easy to read, a lot of gold nuggets in there, five-star reviews on Amazon. Yes, I'm plugging my own product here, but it's really, I found, a gap in the market where people are too focused on technical analysis and not focused enough on the human side of trading. And the reality is trading is a very emotional process, either on a micro or individual level or on a macro and aggregate level markets are made up of emotions and whether you're buying crypto as a trader or an investor there is emotion involved in all of this which is why you need to create tools such as this little calculator here that enables you to push your emotion aside make a plan draw up the plan on a spreadsheet 
and just place your orders and go for it. If you would like a copy of this spreadsheet, again, write to me at main points I'd like you to consider is that you will never be able to pick the exact top or the exact bottom. Dollar cost averaging is the safest way to invest and hedging your bets in a situation like this can help you not only get a really good buy when there's a dip, as well as getting a secondary great buy if there's a further dip, but most importantly, putting your mind to rest, knowing that you've done your research, you've allocated your budget, you've stuck to the plan, you've put in your orders, You've got some crypto today with the likelihood of getting some crypto tomorrow. The emotion behind this now is that if the market drops, hey, I get some more crypto tomorrow. It's like a little present. But if the market pumps, hey, my holdings have now just gone up in value. It's a win-win situation. Hope this was of help to you. Leave your comments below. Remember, if you want to do anything crypto safely, come over to the crypto.land where you can buy crypto, stake crypto, earn interest on your crypto, do your taxes, get yourself a hardware wallet. Check out my Crypto Land Art Studios where I've published my first five NFTs and they're not dodgy NFTs. They're quite pretty indeed. Check it out. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Go crypto. And I'll talk to you next time.